Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome to episode 8 of this perfect ratio run. It's already episode 8. It's going fast and we will be building vessels this time because ob obviously those ILSs that we've made that pretty nice build for, it's right over there. It's not actually going to do much if we don't have the logistics vessels to transport things between the planets. Now, this build will be a little similar to the previous build actually, although there will be some other complications that will arise because a lot of the materials that we're going to need are the same. Uh, we again need a lot of titanium alloy, we'll need some processors, but the new item here is the reinforced thrusters. The reinforced thrusters actually need uh, titanium alloy as well as well as turbines, so that is where the similarities come from from the other build. We are going to need two sets of, or two uh, assemblers making those rockets as I like to call them. They're not rockets, that's something else, but they look like rockets. And we will need some massive amounts of titanium incoming from over here, titanium alloy to be exact, because these need 5 per 6 seconds, so almost 1 per second, and times 2 of course, so 10 per 6 seconds, and these need another 10 per 6 seconds, so that's going to be 20 per 6 seconds, or at least more than 3 per second in total, which is quite a large number. Now of course we also need some processors that only need to go up here, because this is going to be in going straight into the vessels but yeah this is actually going to be quite a inten resource intensive build once again and if you've ever been wondering if you reach this point in the game uh, where the hell are all my resources and why am i getting all kinds of bottlenecks across my planet these few items so it's the uh, ILSs and um, vessels and other similar items like that like maybe the drones but they are less complicated um, that's probably the reason why you are suddenly getting all kinds of resource issues. Now we're also going to need some turbines as I mentioned. We are going to place them over here. This is actually not the perfect ratio of turbines. Everything else in this build is pretty much perfect. Except for this because we would need to scale this up uh, to either 4 which is overkill. Or we would need to uh, scale the entire build up by quite a lot and that is not something I like to do because then you're producing way 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 more than you actually need and even though vessels are very important you don't need that many of them because you can only fit 10 into a single ILS and because of the way we're making this build we won't actually need a huge amount of ILSs either because we're going to go straight to end game or uh, from raw to the end product which means that we don't need ILSs to supply everything in between now, similar to the previous build, uh, we are going to need twice as much engines as we have turbines. So that means not just these uh, three. We're actually going to make six of them. But we also need to fit in some cogs, some iron, and some magnetic coils over here. So this will be the um, cogs over here. We will need some iron over here. And then we're going to need some magnetic coils over here now this is a little different from the previous build where i kind of flipped those two around and had the magnetic coils on the other side uh, but we're actually going to need the room and i'll uh, show you that in a few minutes but let's make sure we connect all of this up because this is going to spin around once again you can hook up these uh, engines straight into the turbines if you want uh, but we need the other half as well so that's why we're flipping the belt around now the other thing that we're going to need are the cogs and once again because we already have iron over here uh, these can simply draw from the belt that's right in front of them and make them from the same iron that's also going into the engines and that means that we, that we can do it like that. I am going to go quite quickly through this part of the build because it's again pretty similar to what we've been doing last episode. So I think you kind of get the point and I don't want to spend too much time doing the exact same thing for you. Okay, so that fixes most of that. Now, of course, we do need some more materials that we haven't gotten into, the, but we first have to make sure we also have some processors. Now, processors are a little bit of a pain because they will need the components as well as that circuit board unit. And in terms of perfect ratios, this is actually a perfect ratio because we will have exactly enough processors being processed <laughs> for the vessels over here. So we need uh, 10 per 6 seconds, and that is actually exactly what these are going to be producing. So 
perfect ratios. Maybe not everywhere, but at least in this part of the build. Now then, we also need a few more items. Uh, let's make sure I am actually able to fit two belts in between here. I think that should be fine. Yeah, it is. And we are going to need components. And I will need those two belts, as you will see in a moment. I'll take them out right now, though. And uh, we're going to align these nicely with the other ones. And then we have six. And that should be enough to keep all the processors working. Now, in order to supply these processors, sorry, these components to the processors, we're going to make this belt. And we are going to make this belt. This belt, this little tiny piece of belt here is going to be a problem because of the uh, iron that we need to pull in from elsewhere. Um, I will show you that in a second, but this is the part of the build that's going to be slightly annoying. All right. Um, just to measure it out, I am going to place this one over here. And then maybe a lack of item. How am I already out of these? Okay, apparently I need to go and pick up some more um, uh, assemblers. So be right back while I do that. Okay, there we are. And I actually put down the two last assemblers that we actually are going to need for this build. Um, it's just a shame I just ran out at the last moment. Anyway, um, what we're going to do is we are going to have the components on this belt. And again, they kind of need to wrap up to the other side. Of course, you can extend the six um, uh, component producing units over here and make basically one big row. But the symmetry is kind of off in that way. It will be perfect either way in terms of the symmetry because we of the number of items we have. But I prefer this look. So yeah, if you want to switch it around, of course you can. I just like the looks of this build. Okay, now what else do we need? Well. Uh, quite a few things because remember that all that titanium alloy that we need we are going to be putting that over here so let's see let's nicely align this with these and we are going to need uh, let me count 10 of those so uh, this is 8 this is 10 does that look about right? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, so uh, titanium alloy. Now, we've been doing that before, but we're actually going to do it slightly different in this build. Why? Because we can, and doing the same thing over and over is kind of boring anyway. So this is going to be the uh, input for the titanium. We are also going to need some acid. And don't forget, we also need some steel. Now, the steel is actually going to be the thing we're doing a little bit different because, once again, uh, the ratio of steel to titanium or alloy is actually perfect. So, the steel production in the smelter is exactly enough to keep the um, titanium alloy smelter completely full all the time. Um, and that means that if we do it like this, and we put all of this to steel. And if we then connect these straight up, like so, and I probably should have done that like this, then we will actually have all the items that we need. Just to remember, this is going to be the uh, acid, and then this is going to be the uh, titanium. Um, of course, that does mean that we are going to need some... Um, uh, iron as well because steel of course is produced from iron and once again what we're going to do is make use of that exact one to one ratio and put that in over here but of course then we are going to set this to iron now i don't know about you but i I'm, it's very satisfying to see all of these um, smelters directly connected to each other and this belt is going to supply the raw materials that we need in terms of iron or now, um, I really like this part of the build. I just can't get over it. But either way, we are going to need a little more than that because we will also need some. Uh, let's, see, let's put it one more over. There we go. Uh, we are also going to need seven units producing titanium. I like that. There we go. 
And we are going to need a belt to make sure we transport all of that. And it's going to be something like this. It's going to go on that belt. Yes, that looks about right. And then we are going to need some iron. And we're going to need quite a lot of iron, as always, because otherwise it wouldn't be iron. But we're going to need 14 of that. And that nicely syncs up with the titanium that we need, because that's basically just two rows of this. And, of course, as always, we are going to make use of the fact that we can just put one belt in the middle. Supplying all the base materials. And then we're going to wrap this around like so. And we can actually do it like that, I think. And then have that come in over there. Now this is going to be iron, like we said, and some more iron over here. And of course, these two uh, units don't need all the iron that we're going to be producing here. But we are going to bring the iron all the way over here, all the way through here. And like I said, this is where the belt is going to be a little bit annoying. So what we're actually going to do is take it out. And then we're going to... If it let me, lets me click it, there we go. This belt is going to go all the way here, all the way down there. Now that means this belt is now interrupted. So we're going to cheat a little bit over here and have a sorter going over here. Now... This sorter is going to be perfectly able to transport all the items we need on this belt at the right speed because half of the production of components is already coming straight onto the belt. So it's really only the three assemblers over here that will be putting their stuff on this belt that needs to be transported over here. Um, if you found a much cleverer way to do this, let me know. Um, but I'll allow a little bit of cheating in terms of... Uh, the belts going over each other it's just that one sorter now um let's see we also are going to need some uh, copper and now i actually remember why i should not do it like that let's do it like this because we also want to have the copper coming in over here and we're actually not going to need seven of these but we're going to need eight and this is going to be copper and that will supply us with all the copper we need in this build. Now, uh, I explained in one of the previous, uh, or several of the previous episodes actually, on how you can do the math. Um, some people like to build spreadsheets to do that. Uh, you can do it by hand quite easily. Remember, if you, for example, let's take the circuit boards. If you look at how many you need and you know how much per second you need, you uh, can look at the production ratio. This is actually a bad example. So let's take the titanium alloy. So let's say I need um, four per second. Let's make an easy example. Um, this is currently producing four every 12 seconds. So if I need four per second, that means I need 12 times as much. Uh, or if I simply multiply the building number with the production speed, this times 12 seconds, that means that that's the amount I'm going to get per second. So in this case, if I multiply this by 12, I am going to need to get four per second, so four per second. And then of course you can scale that up and down depending on the actual ratio that you need. But by the same logic, that means that if I am getting four titanium alloy per second, then I'm also going to need four titanium per second, four steel per second and eight uh, asset per second. And then of course you apply the same logic to all the other buildings, thereby getting the ratios that you need. Um, yeah, so this is the copper belt. So let's not forget this is copper and this is iron. I really like the memos, by the way, so I recommend using them throughout your own builds as well. Uh, this is going to wrap up down over here uh, into this corner down here and then all the way through here because this needs copper, this needs copper and the uh, coils over here need copper and by doing this we have supplied everything that needs copper with one uninterrupted belt now of course this actually requires some base materials as well so this will be the belt that has the copper ore and then last but not least we are also going to need some uh, actually not last but definitely also not least we are also going to need some 
silicon. Now, the silicon itself is actually a nice ratio as well, and that will quite nicely fit in over there um, because we are going to need 9, 11 of those. And like I mentioned, the ratios are not perfect because of the strange um, um, ratios between several of the buildings and because we don't want to scale it all up to get perfect ratios because otherwise this pretty large build is uh, going to have to be multiplied, I think in this specific case, by 3. So yeah, that it would be a lot of vessels per second that you really don't need. So I'll accept something almost perfect when we're making builds like this. Um, this is going to be the um, silicon bars. That means that we need a second build supplying the silicon ore over here. And then we also are going to need a small number of uh, magnets and actually we we don't need uh, 11 of these we need 12 of these but we only need 11 of these so what we can actually sorry 10 of these so what we can actually do is do it like this so this one unit then this is not a mistake this is actually going to be producing silicon and the other ones on this row are going to be producing magnets but if we do it like this, we have a nicely uh, scaling row of smelters. So once again, it's just my preference. But of course, if you want to have all the same buildings producing all the same stuff in a single row, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. I just like to keep things a little bit more symmetric if I can. Now, that means that we need to bring this belt over here and then up here and then over here because this is where the magnets are going to go we are getting pretty close to finishing this build but remember that we also need some assets and that asset is going to go all the way on top because as always the production of this specific building is going to need a slightly different type of materials from everything else and i just realized that i have a few to um Few too few? Is that correct English? Probably not. Anyway, I have too few uh, chemical facilities in my inbox, uh, in my inventory as well. So that is a shame, but we'll just have to deal with that. Um, but what we can do is if we start just around here, I think, and make sure we space them out properly. Again, that is very nice in case you want to place this somewhere else in your uh, planet then this should be producing the asset. Now we are actually going to need 10 of these and I actually only have six in my inventory. So I will be placing the other ones in a second. But just to wrap up and give you the idea of what it's look, going to look like, there is going to be about four more of those. And that will be nicely aligned with the end of our uh, foundation over there. And what we're going to do with this one is we are actually going to wrap this around, take it all the way down here and then connect it with the belt over here. Let's replace the memo so we know what we're doing. Now, of course, this build actually needs three different materials. So that means we will have to have three belts over here. One, two, and three. Uh, because we will need the uh, stone, the oil, and the water. And as always, I recommend doing the stone on the underside, the second most used item, which is in this case oil on the middle belt and the least used unit on the bar belt. Now, this actually covers all the materials that we need, but of course we, we now have our ILSs, so let's use them. And we have a nice little space over here. So when we take away this thingy, where we can now put in the ILS, and I am going to put it in like this. Not sure what it was colliding with. Anyway, that should work. And actually, no, we might want to put that out one more a little bit. I really like the fact that we now get warnings when we remove these things uh, because this probably makes a little bit more sense to do it like this. Okay, so 
Um, and why am I saying this is really nice? Well, because the only thing we're going to be exporting here, and I like using the top unit for that, is the vessels. But we actually also need three materials on this side. And this is why I built the belts in this direction. We have plenty of room here. So we want to reserve one space for warpers as soon as we get access to that. But that means that we can be requesting the oil, the stone, as well as the water from the same ILS. And we should just set that to demand, 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 demand. Maybe not by the huge amounts that we have set it over here, but we can use it uh, for a pretty nice supply just to make sure we always get those units incoming. Now, that also means that we can use this part and this is nicely aligned like this. And then the last one from out here, around here to there. And as always, please don't forget to actually link up the uh, things because otherwise you can request whatever you want, but it won't actually be coming on to the belt. And there we go. So this is all set up. So actually, this is already set up now. Of course, we need to power it up and make sure we actually have a supply of water, oil and stone somewhere else on our planets. Um, but other than that, this is already going to supply everything that we need. Now, I am going to pick up four more of these chemical facilities. And we are going to have to hook up everything else on this planet as well. Now, um, be right back while I do that and then we can wrap up for the final build. Alright, and as always we're back and we're done with building all of the, I don't know how many sorters. And uh, I snuck in another little cheat because it turned out that I had an issue with the overlapping sorters on this side of the component factory. So actually they're hopping over twice now. I figured why not uh, keep it simple. Uh, other than that, the build is entirely as I made it. I just made one small addition, and that's of course the ILS over here. That is now, assuming I set it to the right mode, as you can see, it's now actually importing some of all the base materials. Now, on the other planet, I did build a very simple uh, ILS. Uh, it has some miners with silicon, some miners with titanium, some miners with iron, and some miners with copper attached to it. That's it, nothing special, just miners and an ILS. But of course, you don't actually need to power up the ILS on that side of the planet. Um, if you do, and that is what I will eventually be doing, I will be reversing that. So I'll be actually um, exporting from that planet rather than importing to this planet as I am doing now. So that means the uh, logistics vessels will be on the sending planet rather than the receiving planet. Um, but other than that, for now, this works fine and I couldn't uh, be bothered to fly back to the other planet for now. As you can see, it's importing everything, so that's really nice. That just gives you a little bit of insight on how I want every build to work. So we have the uh, ILS importing over here, then it goes all across this thing. And then, of course, we have our little vessels being made. Now, of course, <laughs> the uh, vessels are extremely slow at the start and... Um, we only have four at the moment, um, which is mainly because I don't have a lot of silicon incoming. But as you can see, we have 400 coming in now. We have some titanium as well. Uh, of course, the iron and the copper, it's a little bit um, overdoing it. I suppose that I'm manually requesting it from the other planet. Well, we have plenty on this planet. So you can either hook that up uh, if you want, or you can simply just steal something from a belt and manually put it in for a moment uh, until you get some vessels going and then you don't have to ever worry about that doing that manually ever again but with the um, mark 3 belts as you can see picking up a few hundreds of each different resource is extremely fast it only takes a matter of seconds so it's a nice way to kind of kick start uh, one of your ILS builds if you want to do that and of course in case you didn't know that trick if you just go to the uh, world view you can click on your ILS just control click on your ore and just put it in. You don't have to be next to it. You can do this from the other side of the planet if you want to. And by doing that, you can easily swap between ILSs. It's actually also a nice trick if you have materials in one ILS that you want to put in a different ILS. Um, as long as you're on the same planet, you can easily swap materials between the two. 
Of course, I also hooked up the oil over here. And in order to do that, I made one of my uh, little oil hubs over here. Once again, this is the upgraded version with Mark III belts and sorters. Um, sorters are not actually needed, but the belts are a nice touch. And the blueprint is both on the website as well as on the uh, comments on the last, or sorry, the description of the last episode. Um, I've, I'll be using these a lot. And again, you see the hydrogen being burned off over here. Uh, it's a nice way to get rid of it. I saw someone actually asking a question about power. Um, if you build a few of these, you'll get a nice amount of power, as you can see. I built several of these. I now have more than pow more power than I actually need, almost twice as much. I do also have quite a few uh, windmills, especially around my earlier builds. It's dark over here, so it's a little hard to see, but as you can see, so just put those in. I will be replacing those, of course, with probably solar energy uh, pretty quickly. That is one of the next few builds I want to do. But of course, uh, to wrap up our whole ILS build, we also want a build for drones. So depending on how fast I can actually get these things up, because I do think you are waiting for both the solar energy as well as the drones. Uh, I'll be putting those both of those up this week. Um, but first, I want to get this one out because vessels are awesome to have. You want that one going as fast as you can. Um, look, there's three more. And initially, I really recommend just putting those into your um, ILS that is actually producing this. Just to keep up the speed, you can put in 10. So make sure that you do that. And then you should have all, your, all the vessels you'll ever need quite quickly. Um, if you use my blueprint, then the max levels will already be set. But if you are building this yourself, don't forget to limit uh, both the importing and exporting items. Because... Logistic vessels are very cool, but you don't necessarily need 10,000 of them, which is the default setting. So I suggest you limit it to around 100. That is enough for 10 ILSs. You can maybe put it up to two or 300 if you want, but more than that is really not necessarily because by the time you've actually used all of those vessels, you will have produced more than that. So yeah, uh, but do of course, whatever you like. I hope you enjoyed this build. Um, as you can see, I totally less <laughs> from the other build just to put it in for a moment. But of course, we'll be replacing that right after I uh, finish making some of these vessels. And um, yeah, that is it. I think this is a nice and symmetric build once again. Uh, and as I mentioned, the next few episodes will be on the drones as well as the solar energies before we move on to the higher tier sciences so we can get some more advanced stuff going and maybe start looking at um at Ashton square all right i hope you enjoyed this one and i will catch you in the next one